Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be looking at how I painted my Stark Sworn Swords from a Song of Ice and Fire game. Uh, these guys have been a lot of fun, and it's been nice to have a switch from a lot of the gang's workshop models that I have been painting lately to do something that's a little bit more simplistic. Uh, if you've painted games workshop, you know how detailed even the smallest, most insignificant model can be on their range. So to go to something that they're, they're beautiful models, but they're not quite as filled with small, tiny details everywhere has been a lot of fun. Now, when I set out to figure out how do I want to paint these guys, one of the things I knew I wanted to stay away from was a lot of the light gray blue colors that are actually the main colors for the Starks because I wanted to use those as accents or on parts that maybe would uh, delineate who the faction is that we're talking about rather than doing the whole tabard or large pieces of the model in that color. So I had to figure out what other color did I want for their tabards. Well, as I was looking around and trying to catch inspiration from different people, I saw a video on how Angel Geraldes paints his white cloth, and I loved it. It's an off-white, uh, kind of a cream, but not really a cream. And so I took some very simplistic ideas of what he was doing and brought it over here. Now, when I'm painting these models, I decided to go for a very thin down paint using multiple, multiple layers in order to build up depth across the model. So it's a little bit different than how I would paint Space Marines or how I even paint my Star Wars Legions models. So I hope you're able to gain some insight and maybe some inspiration from a little bit of what I'm doing. With that, let's go ahead and jump into the video. So we went ahead and primed these guys in black. And a large reason why is because as we build up these layers, you'll notice that every paint is gonna be painted on with at least two thin layers. The black allows us to kind of control our shadows. As we build these layers up, we leave the parts that we want to be a little bit darker or caught in shadow to not have as much built up paint on them. Now, important thing to remember is make sure that you're allowing your paint to completely dry between every thin down layer of paint, or you'll get a lot of paint shrinking and you'll see brush strokes in there and it will just give you a texture that we really don't want here. You can kind of see as we paint up that cloth, how the first few layers really just very loosely cover it. That's totally okay. We don't really want in one brush opaque finish. We're looking to slowly build up these layers. Now when we do the leather here, we need to be careful, especially once we get to areas around the tabard and that white cloth we've already done. So make sure you have a good brush, take your time. If you make any mistakes, all you have to do, clean your brush off, get a little water on it, and wipe away wherever the mistake was made. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. That's totally fine and it's paint. We can clean it up. I really wanted to use this dark gray for a lot of the sigils and uh, the markings of the dire wolf on these guys. That way, it kept the model a little bit darker, didn't make it feel as bright and cartoony as maybe using that gray-blue, and really helped to create a distinction with that dire wolf. Somehow, I ended up with no video of me painting on the gray-blue color but it went on pretty much exactly the same as that tabard color. So this is definitely the best metal paint that I've ever worked with 
The Vallejo metal color, although it's meant to be used through an airbrush, is amazing with a brush. It goes on super smooth, has really great coverage. It are very vibrant um, colors that show through that have a lot of life in them. Uh, the one thing that you have to be careful is because it is meant for an airbrush, it's a lot thinner and it runs more. And even whenever you put it, especially if you were to put out a wet palette, it separates a lot. I put mine simply in a little well. As we're painting the chainmail here, I'm not as worried about getting full coverage. It's okay if the recesses are left there, uh, but if not, that's fine because we're gonna put a wash over it anyways to get inside and darken up those recesses. It can be pretty liberal with this wash. That's totally fine. We're gonna put it on all the metallic parts, but we especially wanna make sure that it gets into the chain mail. Now on these uh, gray blue parts, we want them as well to have that black, but we really wanna focus it towards the shadowed areas. When we put it on the cloak, we're just gonna kinda of put it on and then I wash off my brush and put a little bit of water on my brush in order to kinda of feather it out and spread that black out so it doesn't have any of the streaking. It, it doesn't have those marks that you sometimes get when you are using washes, but it does deepen a lot of the different parts of the cloak. We really wanna keep doing this and just leave kind of those upper edges and ridges as the original light gray blue color. We'll go over these a couple of times in order to get the shadows kind of where we want them and to leave those upper parts really sticking out. You'll notice that we actually just kind of put this Agrax Earthshade in spots on the chainmail, and that's to give it some different color variations and make it feel a little bit more natural and less like the armor itself. What we're doing here is rather than building up highlights, we're really just creating a little bit more shadows and using this very, very watered down, uh, very much like a wash. And we're gonna focus on the areas where we want shadows and we're gonna keep going over it in multiple coats, but it also builds up a color variation that kind of helps it feel a little bit more natural and less like just a flat cloth with highlights over the brightest spots. Once again, make sure each layer is completely dry, and this does take some time as it's pretty watered down, but make sure it's completely dry before going on to the next one. With that done, we kind of just lightly pick out edges. Uh, we want to do this very lightly. We don't want your extreme edge highlights, but just very light ones. This paint's pretty watered down as well, actually in order that it blends fairly easily.
we may go over some of these parts a second time in order to just kind of boost it, but we want this to be a very small area of really just the highest ridges of the cloth. And we don't want to keep building up and getting rid of all the shadows we've taken time to create. Paint the shield, we really want to follow the texture that's already been modeled into the shield rather than creating our own. So we're going to use kind of light brush strokes in order to pick out those ridges that have been modeled in there. And as we build up these colors, we'll do that in increasingly smaller areas. And one of the things I focused on is making sure that these vertical lines mix matched. So where I would paint it on top of, of above the dire wolf, I would also paint it below in the same area. We kind of want to reestablish some shadows here because it got a little bit lighter than I wanted it. And so we'll use sepia ink to accomplish that. For this little fur part on the back of his cloak, I was really just playing around and trying to get a color I had in my mind. I don't know that I ever got there, but after a while, I just decided that it would have to be good enough and I needed to move on. As always, when painting multiple layers, make sure that your first layer is dry before you move on to your next one and your second layer is dry before you move on to your third, and so on and so forth. We want to just kind of outline the dire wolf and then we'll put some scratches kind of in the middle of it. When highlighting this metal, we really just want to focus on raised edges. We don't want to go back over everything, um, but just like on this blade, we want to hit the edge that is pointing up and then maybe add some different elements here. But for the most part, just focus on the brightest areas. Here on the chainmail, you'll see that we're really focusing on just specific parts of it. This silver is a very bright color, and as you can see, it really pops out from the color that we have below it. So we need to be careful that we don't create too much brightness, but instead we focus our brightness in specific areas where the light would shine the brightest. For the leather elements, the way I went with this is we just did a lot of stippling in order to create the idea of scratches and kind of a more worn out leather look. Uh, you can do this a lot of different ways, but for me, just a lot of small stippling motions in order to create a lot of little ticks all along the leather. For the boots, I wasn't too worried about making them look especially nice and just kind of kept it random and focused on ridges and high points. Uh, for this last highlight on the leather, just created micro scratches using this color. It's a big jump from the previous colors, so make sure that you're keeping your scratches very thin
Well, so that's it, guys. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this. Uh, if you have any thoughts, critiques, or comments, I would love to hear them. If you have an idea of what unit or what model you would like to see done next in our Song of Ice and Fire range, let me know in the comments or send me a direct message. It's been a lot of fun and I love hearing from you guys. So please let me know what you thought. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.